This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, everybody. We're back. Arms are in the air. Here at the New Sex Book Tour. Thank you to this. Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Casino. Indeed, we got some updated chip counts. I'm sorry, you're really you're, you're slamming a sandwich. So I was I. My mouth full. <laughs> for the for the two minutes I had. So here's your counts. Uh, uh, oh, real quick. Oh, we have an all in on a call. And it's Jackson and Ace Queen Farrell is in there against Anderson. And an ace on the flop. And a queen on that turn as well. So Anderson, right off the bat, manages to crack Farrell. So Anderson's going to double up, and he was at 520. So that will put him at, uh, with the Annies, around one, uh, about 1.1-ish, somewhere in that ballpark. And uh, that's going to cost Farrell a half a million chips. So two big hits for Farrell. So let's uh, update those chip counts. We had them updated until that hand. So uh, let's take a look around because that, that just changed the playing field here. Richard Mullen now is at 1.3 million coming off that uh, huge hand that he hit a little while ago. And Jeech Sar uh, Shergill is now your leader. He stands at 2.145. Uh, Noah Thist uh, Thistlewaite is at 575,000. Fraser Short at 1.385. With the loss in that hand, Farrell drops to 1.44. John Sanborn is at 1.1. And, and uh, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, a little later. Sanborn is at 520. And with the double up... That is going to put Calvin Anderson at a one point, uh, about 1.25. So Calvin Anderson, a big double up right off the bat. And hey, boy, that's what you like to see. <laughs> but uh, I can see what Nate's doing on video, so he's not going to answer me for the moment. But uh, Jeet Shergill, with uh, two big hands going against uh, Neil Farrell, has uh, taken the chip lead. And the man who's trying to win this series is also now in a position to win this event. Seven players left here at Gregal Resort and Casino. But wow, Nate, uh, how about that? Guy goes from about 2.8 down to 1 point, uh, about, well, about 2.6 to 1.4 uh, in a hurry. Two quick hands. Don't be irresponsible with your chips at these levels. Yeah, well, well, you know, I mean, that was a good call with the jacks. I mean, uh, or the queens. I mean, you know, certainly nothing, uh, or jacks, certainly nothing wrong with that. He actually had the best hand both times, so. And now we got Fraser Short in a hand taking on Farrell again. Of course, just a little while ago, we lost uh, Drew McGregor out in eighth place. And on a 310 queen board, it's like about 85,000 chip bet from short. And guess who just went? Farrell just went over the top for 220. So <laughs> I'll tell you what, Short has got to get getting tired of being Farrell's punching bag at this point. And he is going to muck it. So Neil Farrell picking up another hand at the expense of Fraser Short. Boy, how tough is that? Short gets him once right at the beginning of this final table, but uh, just has not been able to do anything else. With Neil Farrell. And 
Right, let's go to the next hand here. Calvin Anderson is on the button. Blinds are now at 15000 30000 5000 Andy. So not such a cheap price to play poker. Of course, those Annies are worth the stealing right now. you got seven players. That's 35000 plus the blinds. You know, that's a that's a pretty significant shot to take if you can just, you know, pick up a few, uh, you know, steal a few blinds and get, you know, get your stack built up. And Sanborn is going all in now uh, for, you know, around half a million. And right away, Anderson on the button has taken some time to think about this. And Anderson is asking for a count here. And Anderson has pushed all in. So, wow, we have a big hand shaping up right here. And they're going to flip him up. It is an ace 10 for Sanborn. Anderson with an ace queen. 257 on the flop. And, and a 10 on the turn. six on the river so a so a little bit of a beat put on there and it is that one's going to go to john sanborn picking that one up and a big hit to calvin anderson stack he had just gotten the the big double up and all of a sudden it has gone away again so big hand there for john sanborn uh, that should put him uh, back over around a million chips now that should take anderson Back down to around uh, about 700000 or so. Nate Dallin, by the way, in Las Vegas, uh, keeping me company over here. Yeah, and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, I see that. <laughs> Nate is on a video call with me on Skype, and uh, Nate has McDonald's fries he is thrusting at the camera. Very mean, cruel, and nasty. I've got a sandwich sitting over here I got to eat for two minutes. My my American gluttony. Yeah, you are cruel. <laughs> you are cruel, sir. Yeah, he's in he's in Canada, eh? And it's funny that they all say a, and that's why Canada is C A N A A D A. Well, it makes it simple. Eh? Yeah. Hey, how would you often back? <laughs> I don't like what you did. All right, and Farrell has uh, bet here uh, under the gun plus one. It's like the bet of uh, about sixty-five thousand or seventy. Yeah, yeah. Well, seventy looks like seventy. Uh, action is over to Shergill. So Shergill is in there and also staying in is Thistleweight. Jack seven three on the board. Rainbow flop. And is checked around to Farrell. And let's see if Farrell's going to make a call on this or make a bet, and he does. 85,000. And uh, his, both players get out, so a nice pot for Farrell there, and he needed it. So Neil Farrell. Trying to build his stack back up after a big hit at the end of the last level in the first hand of this one. Seven players left. Going around the table once again, we got Richard Mullen in seat one. Keith Shergill in seat two. Norm Thistleweight in seat, or excuse me, uh, Shergill's in seat three. Thistleweight in five, Fraser Short in six. You know you can smell them. <laughs> I can't. Jesus, stop it. Uh, Neil Farrell in eight. Here comes John Sanborn in nine and Calvin Anderson in seat ten. Nate Dallin, by the way, in Las Vegas, is uh, keeps putting those fries in the camera, thinking he's a funny guy. <laughs> you know you can smell them. You know you want some. Dude, I can get much better fries up here. I'm sure you can. And I will at some point. In front of you on Skype right now. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, the worst, that's not bad. The worst is the food that I have sitting off camera. 
Is what? The food I have sitting off camera right now. That's the problem. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I drive home. All right, and we've got a raise here from Farrell and a call from uh, for all from Anderson. Action has folded around to Fraser Short. So Short trying to make a decision on this, and given the. Uh, and he has gone over the top to 180. So Farrell now with, uh, I believe, uh, 75 or 80 in there already. Along with Anderson. Farrell's going to fold it, and, that, and Anderson just instantly pushes the chips in. It is ace-queen for... Short. It looks like King Queen for Anderson. And the King hit on the flop, and Anderson is going to double this up. So a bad break there for Freezer Short. So the bad beats are coming out here all of a sudden. keeping players alive and that is going to save Calvin Anderson's day so Calvin Anderson picking up a picking up a big pot and leaves Frazier short in major trouble at this point so we have seven players remaining here top prize 60,000 175 bucks <laughs> that is a huge top prize you, even Rudy says it's a huge top prize well yeah all right, so uh, boy, I'll tell you two uh, two potential eliminations to start this thing off, and uh, both of them uh, go the way of the underdog. So we'll have Farrell in the big blind here. We're going to bring it all the way around to Norm Thistleweight. Got to love that name, and Norm is all in. Looks like about four hundred thousand or so. And everybody's going to fold that up, and Thistle Wait will take that one down. Of course, one route, you know, just stealing one set of blinds and annies. 80,000 chips, Nate. I mean, wow, that's a, you know, that's a pretty good steal there. If you can pick it up, you know, given where uh, you know, everybody's kind of sitting, you know, between uh, half a million and two million in chips. So pretty significant uh, pickup there to you know, at least get another 80,000 out of it. And, of course, Nate is in a stupor over there. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, we're starting to get some fans gathering around the table here. And uh, Shergill now has fired out into these blinds. and Or he actually just made the call. That's interesting, and that uh, wow, Farrell, Farrell calls and Sanborn's going to check this. A king deuce, two hearts on the board. Checked her around to Shergill, who looks so puts in two hundred thousand on this. Because we do have white chips in play now. They did a color up. So now we have white chips in play that are worth 100000 each. And uh, Farrell's going to call. Sanborn's big blind obviously not good enough. So we got two hearts on the board with King High. Nine of diamonds on the turn. And 400000 quickly in. By Shuriel after a Farrell check. And Farrell's got to be very careful here. You know, this that stack getting dwindled down a little bit. Can't really afford to make uh, too many more mistakes at this point. And now you're messing with the one guy that could take you out of the tournament. Farrell playing with his chips and pulled all his white chips off to the side. And just makes the call. A 
So queen of hearts, so a third heart now comes out on the board. Pretty big board, and it goes check, check. And both players show a king, but a king 10 for Farrell, king 8 for Shergill. So that's going to be a million chip pot going, uh, going the way of Neil Farrell. How about that? So just like that, the chip leader takes the big hit, and Farrell has found his way back into this thing. And uh, just declared by uh, Jeff that Farrell has officially taken the, according to him, has taken the chip lead. So we have flipped the script again here on this final table. First, once again, we're live here at the Great Eagle Resort and Casino. Sorry we can't actually show you the table and you got to look at me, but uh, Alberti, Alberta Province Gaming Regulations prevents us from uh, even turning the camera towards the table. So we're having a great time here. I'm Mark Hoke. Thanks for being with us. We are live at Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. These guys play it for $60,000 on top right now. Seven players left. Richard Mullen, Jeet Shergill, Norm Thistlewaite, Fraser Short, Neil Farrell, John Sanborn, and Calvin Anderson. Trying to hang on here. And Mullen, who had that big double up uh, under the gun, is going to put in a raise to 65. Blinds of 15,000, 30,000. Jeet's out of the hand, but uh, showing some nifty chip rolling tricks. But now Neil Farrell. Digging into that big stack. And he has re-raised, it looks like, about 155. The blinds fold, and it's going to go back to Richard Mullen. Of course, Mullen got that triple up a little while ago that eliminated Drew McGregor and took a big hit out of out of Farrell. And now Mullen's going to try and... Farrell's going to try and get some revenge here. All in checking his chips here. And he will make the call, so let's take this to the flop. Two clubs on the board, nine kingies. And Mullen's going to check it over to Farrell here. And the way Farrell's played this tonight, I can't imagine he's not going to fire at this pot. Now 85,000, kind of a, a surprisingly small bet. Boy, I'll tell you, I'd have uh, some alarm bells going off if it were me on that. There is a call for Mullen. Ten diamonds on the turn. So a couple of clubs out there. He's uh, ace king on the board too. Mullen checking that off. Interesting check, and a check from Farrell. Oh, I hate that. I don't like that from either player. I'll we'll talk about that, Nate. Uh, four of uh, four diamonds on the river. Probably didn't change anything. So now, uh, you know, first guy to fire, good opportunity. I'll tell you what, if Farrell checked that off, if I'm Mullen, I'm I'm looking to see if I can take this thing down. And he does bet. Uh, looks like about two, two twenty-five. All right, we're back, Mark. Okay, we're off the phone and. We're, we're here, but we've got Sly Poker Girl with us now, too. Oh, goody. All right. She's just getting into her nightly groove. She's been crushing, absolutely crushing the last week. Oh, great. All right, well, we're in uh, in the middle of a hand right now. We've got to, we're on a river. 
And uh, like I said, Mullen has just bet 225 at this thing. But both these guys check the turn, and, uh, you know, I, I I just don't like that, that check on the turn from Farrell. Uh, you know, when he's in position, he's got a chance to take that hand down. And by showing weakness now, Mullen has taken the, you know, taken the control of the hand away from him. And Farrell is in the tank. Farrell, the redhead, kind of wearing a gray hoodie, shuffling some chips, and now is going fishing and has pulled out, looks like half a million? Yep, half a million. And Richard makes the call. And that diamond gave him an ace-high flush, and Mullen paid him off, so... I'll tell you what, Mullen, uh, yeah, Mullen, did, yeah, wow. That is, a boy, not a good play by Mullen, and that is going to put him in some major trouble now. Mullen mucked the hand so we didn't get to see what he was holding, but nice job by, uh, by Farrell. Managed to set a trap on that. But I'll tell you one thing, Nate, that the, the checks on the turn, you know, Farrell could have Farrell probably could have saved himself some you know, Mullen could have saved himself some chips by betting that turn. But if you don't bet, you don't get the information you need. Right, and that's so the you have to, and that's the you problem. Have to get your bet sizing proper. He, yeah, I mean, you know, if he if he bets that turn, you know, Mullen probably or Farrell probably goes over the top and he gets away without losing another half million in chips, you know, maybe costs him a couple hundred thousand at the most. But uh Now, so I, I'll I'll take back the uh, the check by Farrell. Managed to get uh, get maximum value out of that. See, I'm not afraid to say I'm wrong. <laughs> no, you're not afraid of anything, Mister Oates. No, well, I'm afraid when Matt Savage has a uh, sneaky smile on his face. <laughs> wow, devastating hand there to Richard Mullen, and uh, that looks like that's got him down to about. Uh, he's counted out right now. Who won the turbo event? Uh, we everybody got out the door before I got to see. Oh, because we were getting everything done on the final when they hit the final table and that thing ended, so they were gone. So we don't know if it even got chopped up or no, but I don't think it did. I they were heads up, so obviously they were playing it out. Yeah. All right, and we've got uh, Mullen under the under or uh, in the big blind right now and under the gun. Shergo bets 80,000. Boy, he hasn't hesitated to play into the gun. And a lot of these guys haven't. The, you know, under the gun play is not scared these players at all. And action has now gone over to uh, Neil Farrell. The Glasgow, Scotland native. The action at the, at the big-ass poker house is starting to heat up, so I don't want to interrupt the the play by play that you've got going on, Mark. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm I'm just gonna kick back out here if you need me. You can say something. I'll still listen, but right. I don't think I'm gonna un unmute very often if that's okay. Okay, sounds good, right. Nate. Thanks for being on the show. Appreciate it. No problem. All right. See you, oh, see you oh, tomorrow. All in a call. Queens and Jacks and uh, Jeep. Nine nine ace. King on the turn and and eight and wow. Jeet Shergill has just popped off a huge hand here against Niall Farrell, and the chip leader has just fortified himself with that hand there, counting him up right now. So that'll cost Farrell 1.375. Actually, I mean, well, and I apologize, Shergill has now taken back the chip lead. He had given it back to Farrell, and now Farrell has given it back to him. 
So a big hand there for Jeet. Shergill retakes the chip lead. What a wild one this has been here at Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. Let's take a break, and we'll come right back and keep this action rolling down to seven players. Things have been getting nasty and wild, and uh, we're covering it all for you right here on the Mark Hoke Show. So stick around, everybody. We will be right back. PokerShop.com is your one-stop shop for all your poker and game room needs. PokerShop.com has you covered with an incredible variety of poker chips and supplies, top quality playing cards, plus gaming tables and room accessories, just like you'd find in your favorite casino. And if you're looking to spruce up your man cave, we offer a wide selection of decor options, from lighting to mirrors, and portable bars to bump stools, to make your game room the one all your friends and family will be talking about. So for everything you need to make your your game night a great night. Go to www.pokershop.com and receive 10% off your purchase with the code HOKE. H-O-K-E. You supply your friends. We supply everything else. Live it. Love it. Pokershop.com. I'm Dutch Boyd, two-time WSOP like bracelet along, winner, Mark. and I want to share my story with you. Twelve years as a pro has taught me a lot. For the last year, I've boiled it all down into a tell-all book, 90,000 words. In Poker Tilt, I take you on my journey through all the ups and downs that poker has to offer, all the manic highs and hellish lows of every bad beat and lucky draw. So go to www.pokertilt.com to read more, or just go buy the new book on Amazon or Kindle. Right now, pokertilt.com. I guarantee you'll enjoy the ride. It's time for you to check out RogueWire.com. News, sports, entertainment, and the internet home of the Mark Hoke Show. Don't wait. Let the sparks fly from your computer at RogueWire.com. And, of course, RogueWire.com is powered by BlueRail.net. For over two years, the Mark Hoke Show has trusted BlueRail.net as their exclusive host, and you can too. Visit BlueRail.net for top-level web hosting, website building and maintenance, one-on-one -on -one customer service, and much more. It's time to get on board with your winning combination. BlueRail.net and RogueWire.com. How far do you want to go? Poker players, it's time to check out DeejPoker.com. Deej Poker is the unique and clever choice for a new generation of true grinders. Representing the full spectrum of poker players from the novice to the world champion, a true Deej player gives their heart and soul for countless hours at the table to be the best. And Deej Poker Apparel shows everyone who you really are on and off the felt. So join the new generation at DeejPoker.com. That's Deej D E E G poker.com. Deej Poker, the world's newest poker apparel store. Hi everyone, Mark here. If you're a poker player like me and looking for something different and exciting to play, you should give Open Face Chinese Poker a shot. It has just the right mix of skill, luck, plus a huge dose of the fun factor we're all looking for. There's a reason Open Face Chinese Poker has everyone from the recreational player to the top pros hooked on its thrills, action, and unique social interactions you won't find in Hold'em. An incredible game like this has got to be worth checking out. And it's easy to learn, especially by using the ABC Chinese Poker app. Download the ABC Chinese Poker app on iTunes today and find out what everyone's talking about. And if you have questions about the game, tweet at ABC Chinese Poker and they'll be glad to help you along. So join the Open Face Chinese Poker community today with the ABC Chinese Poker app and we'll see you at the tables. One man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit BlindSquirrelApparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. 
You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, we're back live here. Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It's it is all separate players left on this final table. Playing for $60,000, $175 on the top. Seven players left. It is Richard Mullen, the C1. Gene Shergill just took back the chip lead again in C3. Norm Thistlewaite in C5. Freezer short. Seat 6, Seat 8, Niall Farrell. Seat 9, John Sandboard. And Seat 10, Calvin Anderson. And it really has been the Niall Farrell show, good, bad, and ugly. He has been ahead. Oh, wait, and uh, now we have this will wait all in. Oh, looks like about... Be in for 540 here. Neil folds. And action is going around now to John Sanborn, who's going to let that go. And and Norm Thistleweight will take that one down. Seven players remaining here. But, uh, of course, uh, Farrell head of the <laughs> the best three times and could not pick it up any time. Or th oh. And uh, Jeet Shergill. He took a Farrell, took one off Shergill. Shergill took a big one off Farrell. They, those guys have been trading chips back and forth. And Farrell has somehow still managed to keep, stay highly aggressive, pushing hard. But of course, uh, Jeet right now trying to take command of the stable. And uh, Richard Mullen has gone all in here. Folded all the way around now to John Sanborn. And they're getting a count on him. And Mullen's only got a yeah, about 300000 in front of him here. Fold one. Now let's see if Anderson's going to try and make the call. He's got enough chips to do it, but he's going to let it go. So big hand here for uh, so Richard Mullen will double or uh, well get the blinds and annies, but wow what a wild tournament this has been and a great final table. Uh, we lost Jason Ross in tenth place. Uh, Mark Wilson went out in, in ninth in spectacular fashion, which uh, now Farrell had put him out and uh, really looked like he'd been in great shape. Drew McGregor uh, going out in eighth quite a while ago. Uh, blinds are right now at 15,000, 30,000, 5,000, any. Seven players left here. And button right now is on John Sanborn. And everybody's going to fold around to the blinds, so Calvin Anderson. 15 in already on this. Uh, just goes all in. <clears throat> and uh, Mullen with that short stack gets out of there. So Anderson will get a blind and Annie steal out of that. Of course, uh, you know, those are, you know, it's not bad right now. 45000 for the blinds. 
plus another uh, 35000 for the ace, so it's 80000 to steal this thing. That Richard Mullen, who's been riding a roller coaster ride on this final table, too, had a triple up a while ago and then knocked back down. He has been, I mean, it, it's amazing. These guys, you know, Mullen's been up and down. Shergill has, uh, you know, been in a solid spot, but he's been up and down today, too. Thistleweight has been pretty steady, just looking for spots. Fraser Short has slowed down, uh, had a lot of trouble uh, with Neil Farrell sitting next to him. Uh, John Sanborn, pretty quiet at this table, too, and uh, Calvin Anderson has picked up quite a few chips after his entrance to this final table. But uh, Farrell and uh, Shergill have really been commanding the action at this table. You get another raise a take there, and the uh, button will slide over to seat one, Richard Mullen. Of course, we're at the Great Eagle Resort and Casino. We're down in the event center. First time this event center has been used, and I'll tell you what, uh, great venue. We're up on stage right now, uh, table down in the center of the building. Of course, uh, we can't show the action on the air for you. They do have a uh, little closed circuit where they're showing the camera uh, over the top of the table here in the room. Unfortunately, due to Alberta gaming regulations, can't hook anything up or even turn this camera away from me. So we're doing what we got to do in here. And Fraser Short has gone all in. And folding around. And Shergill gives his cards a flick before he flips them in, I would imagine. They're gone, and that'll take care of it. So Fraser Short is going to pick up a nice 80000 on that. <clears throat> But, of course, uh, you know, these guys, uh, you know, you're looking at, oh, uh, let's see, about, uh, what, 5,000. Uh, about 80,000 play rotation. So, you know, even these guys that are sitting at, you know, a, a million chips, you know, nothing to really worry about. I mean, you know, if you're, you know, but, of course, these guys are around 200, you know, for example, uh, Mullen sitting around 300 right now is just hoping to hit something here soon. And John Sanborn's putting a raise to 85. And gets nothing out of it. And looks like here's the uh, remaining prize pool. Seventh place picks up $9,985. Sixth place, $11,910. Fifth place, $14,895. Fourth place, $19,840. Third place, $26,805. Fourth place, or second place, $40,330. And the winner, $60,715. I'll buy you a lot of hockey sticks. <clears throat> We're about 9.48 here in Mountain Time. Started play at 2 o'clock, so we're about 8 hours in. And looks like just getting ready uh, to finish this level up, so we're going to be headed uh, to our next blind level. Twenty thousand, forty thousand, five thousand coming up here at level twenty six. Uh, right now we got a hand going on between Jeet and John Sanborn. Do six four two diamonds. Action goes to Sanborn. <clears throat> uh, one fifteen. And Jeet says no thanks. Sanborn will pick that one up. All right, so we go up to 20, 40,000, 5,000, Annie. <clears throat> These short stacks are uh, 
now all of a sudden this is gonna this is getting expensive. Sixty thousand for your blinds, plus uh, another thirty-five thousand in anties. It's gonna cost you ninety-five thousand to get through rotation here. So would expect that uh, Fraser, sh uh, for example, Fraser Short, Mullen, Thistleweight. Uh, now that we've hit this level, are really gonna have to take a stab at something here to stay alive. Speaking of which, there is Fraser Short uh, going all in. And Farrell has asked for a count on this. And 380, and Farrell has made the call. Queen 6 for short. Farrell has called with an ace five. Short pulls his hoodie over his head. He can't watch. Eight, three, four, deuce on the turn. So there is the wheel for Farrell, and he is going to eliminate Frazier short, so that is going to take care of him. Finishing in seventh place, Frazier short. Boy, and it's kind of ironic that... Uh, Farrell was the one to take him out. I'll tell you, Frazier uh, you know, played great throughout this tournament, but unfortunately it comes to an end here in seventh place, but he's going to pick up almost $10,000 for a great job for himself today. And Short, uh, of course, started this day off in... Oh, and, uh, well, we'll mention that in a second, but Short finished, uh, 40, started 49th today, 56,000 chips, and he is, uh, ends up, turns into seventh place. Very nice, but with that uh, elimination, it is official now. Not that it wasn't going to happen anyway, but uh, Jeet Shergill has won the Player of the Series Award, so uh, gets all sorts of cool stuff from Deep Stacks. Congratulations to him. And they put the little trophy on the table, too, which they're proceeding to beat around like a pinata. Let's uh, take it easy on the trophy, guys. <laughs> and now Jeet has uh, apparently decided to use it as a fortress. Up Now he's picking it up and looking at it. So we are once again down to six players here. But that takes care. Once again, uh, Fraser short out in seventh place. So six remain. And, of course, uh, Jeet Shergo trying to bring this home. Well, what a great way to do it. Uh, you know, to not only win the tournament series, but to win this main event, too. How special would that be for him? So we're six-handed now. Uh, Richard Mullen in the big blind, and it has folded around to Calvin Anderson in the small. Oh, excuse me, Jeet is in there. Uh, he did uh, he did make the call under the gun. Queen Jack four two clubs on this flop, and Mullen checks it. Jeet bets, and that takes care of that. And Richard Mullen just in desperation mode right now. Not many chips over there left to work with. So Jeet is Shergill. In pretty darn good shape here to try and win this tournament. The $60,000 up top. Six players remain here in this main event. Deep Stacks Poker Tour Calgary stop here at Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. 
And if you want to check out Gray Eagle Resort, I'd certainly recommend you do it. Gray Eagle Resort and Casino.ca. It's a place to be. Sure, go in the big blind here. $85,000 raise coming out of Neil Farrell. And Mullen has gone all in. Sure, he'll move the trophy out of the way so he can fold. And Neil is checking the count on this. And Neil calls with a jack nine against an ace four of Mullen. The jack on the flop. But ace on the turn may have saved Mullen here. Three of hearts, so Mullen manages to double up, and boy, Neil Farrell just continues. Even when he takes a lead on a hand, <laughs> he can't hang on. So Mullen's going to stay alive again. We won't go away, and we are once again down to six players. Of course, all these players are guaranteed are guaranteed a five-figure score here. Eleven thousand nine hundred ten bucks for the next player out. And very happy to have you with us tonight. Of course, uh, at the Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. Uh, playing out, playing this out. Final table. We got Matt Savage down there, our tournament director, having a good old time. Blinds are twenty thousand, forty thousand, five thousand. Annie Jeet Shergill is your leader at this point. No break listed on the board, but it, they should get a break after this level ends. Thirty-two minutes left. <laughs> Jeet. Is having trouble with the trophy over there. <laughs> He's using it as a card cover, and it knocked over a tip and knocked over his chip stack. I'm gonna, I gotta give, a, I'd give Jeet some advice. I say, I'd pass that off to a friend. I don't think everybody's too nervous about the uh, the player of the year trophy right now. I think they're more worried about the sixty thousand dollars. Jeet's still trying to find it. Now he puts the trophy on the other side of him. Now he's got it in his hands. And now I believe he is complaining about the base of the trophy. Apparently not structurally sound. Jeet can't figure out what to do with the Star Trophy. He's going to get fingerprints all over this thing, too. But at least he'll get the button to go along with this. So we'll have uh, Jean on the button. We got uh, Norm Thistle in the small blind. Neil Farrell uh, is now in the big blind. Of course, uh, Fraser Short out of there. But this will wait down on chips right now. Mullen, despite the double up, still not in the best of shape over there. But Calvin Anderson over there has been slowly picking some chips up. He's got a decent little stack of those 100,000 chips uh, sitting in front of him. I think you got to like Jeet's chances to win this tournament, but uh, you know, you somehow Neil Farrell is going to be... Uh, Make some noise one way or the other, but Anderson uh, looking good. And, of course, uh, sitting over there, John Sanborn has just been slow and steady. And it'll fold around to the small blind for Farrell. 20,000, 40,000 on these blinds. Farrell is grabbing for some chips. He'll take it up to 105 and gets the insta fold out of Sanborn. 
By the way, chop value on this, if these guys stopped right now and split it all up, $29,080.50. If they wanted to just go home. I'm sure a couple of these guys on the short stacks would certainly take that at this point. Of course, once again, your remaining payouts down to six. Sixth place, 11,009. 10th, fifth place, 14,895. Fourth, 19,840. Second, third, 26,805. Boy, that chops better in third place money. It's not bad. Uh, 40,330 for the runner up and winner. 60,715. And we have Thistleweight in with a pair of fours against an ace of spades, nine of clubs for Sanborn. So a little bit of a loose call there, but ace high and a three, six, six on the flop. Ten on the turn and a queen on the river. So that is going to double up Thistleweight. So, uh, so Norm Thistleweight not going away. All right, back to the action now with uh, Norm Thistleweight uh, gathering it up a little bit. And pretty much all that did is uh, spread out the short stacks a little bit more. Sanborn taking the hit. But always nice to see when your fours hold up in a spot like that. And it looks like Farrell is bet out here. Looks like he's got about 105,000 out there. And uh, Jeta's is going to stay in there with him. So Ace Queen Deuce two clubs on the board here, and Shergill's going to check it. Given the way Shergill has played, if I'm Farrell, I'm, I'm fired at this. I, it doesn't matter. Oh, he's going to check it though. Seven of clubs on the turn, so we got three clubs out there and some paint and an ace. <clears throat> 250,000 by Shergo. Now, we did see Farrell set a trap like this before, which was the big hand that crippled Richard Mullen earlier. But this time, instead of getting the free, the free check like Mullen did, now Shergill's putting some heat on. And he will make the call. And nine diamonds on the river. Boy, and I'll tell you, would G love to have a chance to take uh, take Farrell out of here, but uh, G is going to check it off. These two guys have been dueling it out all night. I'll tell you, if it wasn't for one or the other, they'd Either one of these guys would probably e have easily won this tournament at this point. And Farrell looks like 450,000. Shergo calls. 
Oh, Ace King against Ace Jack. And Farrell takes that one down, so a nice hand for Neil Farrell. Once again, like I said, these two guys have just been the heavyweights of the table. Of course, interesting, Calvin Anderson has just been kind of sitting back there. You know, decent shape with a couple million chips, and it's just really slowed it down. We have not heard from Anderson for quite a while. I want to thank everybody for being with us tonight. We're live from the Gray Eagle Resort and Casino here on the Mark Hoke Show. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show, Facebook, the Mark Hoke Show. Catch us on KLAV 1230 AM on Wednesdays, 3 p.m. With, uh, of course, Matt Savage uh, is di directing the tournament here. is going to be our guest. Start off our second year on KLAV. Of course, we've been doing the shows you know, probably about 550-some-odd episodes. past three years uh, traveling all over the world or the country haven't been uh, haven't been outside of Canada yet or US and Canada yet but we're getting there and Sam Bourne is put in a bet and Mullen was uh, staring him down for a little bit before he let it go and then uh, Shergill folds and that's going to ship that pot over to John Sanborn. What a wild ride this has been, and, you know, you kind of got to wonder if, uh, you know, this gets down heads up or three ways of it, some sort of deal is going to get made on this. Because we are really starting to get up there on the blinds right now. Uh, you know, of course, still a long way to go on it, but we have uh, 20,000, 40,000 blinds right now, 5,000 ante. Next one coming up is the 25, 50, and the 30, 60, 40, 80 in that order. We'll still have a 5,000 ante coming up on the 25.5 level, but then uh, once we get to the 30.60 level, it goes up to 10,000 on the ante. A couple of these guys, uh, you know, could be getting swallowed up pretty quickly. And speaking of Anderson... Farrell raised it. Anderson goes over the top. Everybody else gets out of the way, and Farrell says, nope. Oh, Calvin Anderson was hoping the, uh, the Farrell ATM was open, but he shut the door real quick on that. Been a great battle tonight here at Gray Eagle. Of course, uh, these guys started 283 entries into this $1,100 buy-in over the two days. Start off with 55 players. We are down on day two here. We're down to six. Going around the table once again, give you a reset since obviously we don't have video on this uh, per Alberta gaming regulations. Richard Mullen is in seat one. Uh, seat three is Jeet Shergill, who claimed the Series player, uh, player of the series. Oh, and excuse me, we have it all in here. Mullen has gone over the top of a raise from Calvin Anderson. All in, and now Farrell is asking for a count. That's about 600,000. And Calvin Anderson, I think, making a mistake here is messing with his chips. Unless uh, Farrell asked him for a count, too. Maybe he did. Yeah, I think Farrell asked for a count on Anderson as well. Pretty good anticipatory move. Oh, and we got both all in. Neil's got queens. Ace-king for Anderson. Ace-nine of spades for Mullen. 10-6-3, so still in the lead is Farrell. Jack of hearts on the turn. Wow, and the queens are going to get it done. And wow, a huge hand for Nero Farrell. And he has eliminated Mullen. 
and eliminates Mullen and eliminates Anderson on the same hand. So Neil Farrell with a huge hand here. That you know that almost is fitting for Farrell because he's been ahead so many times, and now manages to hold off an ace king and an ace nine with those queens, takes it down. So that is going to give Mullen fifth place or sixth place, based on the chip stacks. Fifth place goes to Calvin Anderson. So Richard Mullen, who was the chip leader going into today, started this thing off at 522,000 chips, ends up with a, a sixth place finish. Probably you know, a little disappointed, but I'll tell you what, uh, you know, ran into a, a, a pretty good player there, Neil Farrell. Fifth place, uh, once again, going to Calvin Anderson. I'm sorry, Mullen out of right, White Rock, British Columbia. Congratulations to him on a sixth place finish. And then Calvin Anderson came in here 14th out of Edmonton. Ends it in fifth, and we have taken this down to four players just like that. And poor uh, Norm Thistleweight is uh, just nursing a short stack, and the same thing, the same situation over there for John Sanborn, who's got to feel pretty good that he's made it up to fourth place in this thing. Uh, both those guys have just been struggling to get any traction on this final table. But a huge hand. We're nailing it, or Neil Farrell out of Glasgow, Scotland. And we've got to expect things are going to move quickly now. Uh, probably looking at the, you know, what we saw coming here for a while, uh, Shergill and Farrell. Could they be headed for that heads-up collision that I think a lot of people in the room would love to see? Fans all around the table right now. So Richard Mullen picks up that 11910 fourth place uh, fifth place money 14895 going to Calvin Anderson so congratulations to all those guys Can Jeet Shergill cap off winning the player of the series with the main event championship will it go to Neil Farrell or can this awaiter Sanborn make a miraculous comeback and win this thing. Of course, Sanborn came into this uh, final table in second place, 490,500 chips. Norm Thistleweight was in 10th coming in here. Shergill was 12th. Farrell in 5th. So you're looking at, uh, you know, four guys that, you know, obviously came in pretty well stocked to start this thing up and just found their way, uh, you know, some good poker found their way up there. Of course, we did have a you know, a couple of short stacks doing well. Of course, one of the guys uh, was really short stacked was uh, Fraser Short, 49th, managed to, coming into the day and managed to work his way all the way back to finishing in seventh. All right, we've got three players to the slop now. 85,000 in there for everybody, plus the Annies. 773 on this one. G checks it, Norm checks it, and we'll go over to Farrell. 110 on that one. And G uh, not hesitating. It says 450. Or 400, excuse me. And Norm gets out of the way, knowing that uh, pretty much would have put him in, uh, in for his tournament life. And Farrell gets out of there. So, but I'll tell you, Jeet uh, moves around a lot in his seat, uh, especially with very uh, animated with his hands. Kind of got a, but uh, having a good time out there, so. But you don't have to wonder if there's some tells in there, if, you know, if you're really sitting at the table and able to study him a little bit hard. You know, got to wonder if there's a possibility of him giving something away. Of course, Jeet Shergill, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Norm Thistleweight out of Rocky, Rocky Mountain House, Alberta. The Glasgow, Scotland native Neil Farrell. And last but not least, Jonathan Sanborn out of Edmonton. So the Edmonton crew is still with a representative in here. 
but only one guy trying to take this down for Calgary at this point. Calgary really has dominated this tournament series. But Jeet, the only one left here in the main event. Lines of 20,000, 40,000, 5,000, Annie. And Jeet on the button bets it, and uh, everybody gets out of the way. So we're four handed here. Where's $60,715? What a great, uh, great day that's going to be for one of these guys. Nineteen eight min cash for one of these players left. Eleven hundred dollar buy in, two hundred eighty three entries. Here at Grey Eagle Resort and Casino, Matt Savage just uh, doing a great job running the proceedings here. I'll fold to the blinds and then I'll uh, take it to Neil Farrell in the small. And Farrell puts it to 105. And Sandport's coming along for the ride. So Sandboard not uh, shying away on this one. Jack 9 9. This will be interesting to see if Farrell. Yep, Farrell is going to slow it up. He'll check it. It's a chance for Sanborn to take this hand, and he is grabbing for chips. 125. I have a feeling Farrell's just uh, trying to make this look good on that raise on the raise out of the small blind here. Well, he's messing with chips. Oh, he's going to make the call. How about that? Four of hearts. And Farrell will check again. And boy, there's a, give, there's a check from uh, from Sanborn, too. Ace of hearts on the, on the river. Farrell will check one more time. And it'll be a check there, too. And a jack seven flipped over by Farrell, and it is going to be good. But there is some information there that Farrell is going to keep the have a wide open hand range on that, raise that and raise the big blind on Sanborn with a Jack Seven offsuit. Be interesting now, you know. Of course, uh, information for Sanborn, but can Farrell use that uh, showing those cards to set something up later on here? Always goes both ways. Farrell's kind of giggling about that. Once again, I'm Mark Oak. Thanks for being with us tonight, guys. We're live here at the Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Deep Snacks Poker Tour main event here in Calgary. Four players remaining. We've got Jeet Shergill. We're in seat three, Norm Thistlewaite in seat five, Neil Farrell in seat eight, and seat nine, John Sanborn. Playing it out here for this title. had a great time up here in Calgary. I want to once again thank Greagle Resort and Casino and Lee and Jeff for, and the team for all their hospitality. Ken, Axel, all the guys. I certainly enjoyed having them around here. But these guys continue to fight for a, a massive prize, $60,715. It's one of those you put it, a, you know, if you haven't had a big score before. Looks pretty darn good on your hand and mob. All right, Sanborn on the button. Uh, we have a raise under the gun from Neil Farrell. Right now it's pretty much Farrell and Shergill. <laughs> Sanborn folds and Shergill has made the call and Sanborn's like, oh, please, for the love of God. Could you guys please just get in a fight here? Please. Eight 
ace eight eight a couple of hearts on this board. Shergill is going to have uh, first action on this. Four sixty five bet in the fold. So right now, Shergill and uh, Farrell are overwhelming chip leaders. This will be probably sitting on eh, maybe about half a million, a little bit over that. I think it uh, looks like uh, Sam Ward's got a may have a little bit of a dirty stack there, but he's about in the same ballpark. The other two guys, you know, they're... They're rolling right now, and Farrell, of course, uh, with that double elimination. Giving himself a big opportunity to win this tournament, but uh, really looks like he and Shergill. And Shergill, oh, this is a, this is not good. Shergill is uh, running off to the bathroom. Oh, man. Boy, you got to hold on for eight minutes there. Gave up his button on that too. I gotta tell you that, you know, uh, you know. Unfortunately, they don't have a, you know, one thing that's uh, one issue there is, of course, we've got a you know break posted up on the big board. There should be one coming up after this level. But uh, Shergill taking off for the bathroom. So it gives up his button and then gives up under the gun here, too. See if we can avoid uh, giving up the blinds. But bathroom's pretty close to here, so it's not a bad trip. But uh, it's probably going to cost him three to four hands. Action is over to Farrell here on the small blind. And he'll just whip a couple hundred thousand out. Sanborn flashing a three of clubs and says, no, thank you. But I got to tell you, you know, it would have been interesting to see if Sanborn, I mean, I guess Sanborn probably didn't have the chips to do it, but it would have been very interesting to see if Sanborn goes over the top of what Farrell does. Just such a casual flip of a couple hundred thousand chips. All right, now Shergill in the big blind, but not here. Of course, first card off the deck rule in effect, so he's out of this hand, and so he'll forfeit his big blind. And I'll tell you what, I'm feral. I'm almost thinking raise no matter what. This will wait folds. feral has got to bet this. Shergill is on his way back in the room, but he's going to miss this hand. And, yep, there it is. Good play. Very good play. 300,000 and... Farrell is going to steal those blinds. Great work by Farrell. So the bathroom break will cost uh, Shergill a big blind on that. Still a 20,000, 40,000, 5,000, Annie. Five minutes and 50 seconds left on this blind level. And we get ready uh, shortly to head to level 27. Of course, the blind's 40 minutes in length. 5,000 any, 25,500. Coming up. Bet here from Farrell. And it is good enough to take down the pot. And right now, you just got to feel like Thistleweight and Sanborn are just <laughs> hoping to find something here. A shred of hope, something to you know, pick up a, a loose ace, anything to try and get this done. All right, and there'll be a sure go on the button. This will wait in the small. Farrell in the big, and you know I tell you the uh, 
the positioning couldn't have worked out any worse for both of these guys is for either of them to try and make uh, some sort of uh, all-in raise. They've got to go through two very two aggressive players to do it. And ace 10 against Jax. So it'll be Farrell's ace 10 trying to crack off Thistleweight's Jax. 8-5-3, no help. Six on the turn. And a queen on the river. So uh, Thistleweight hit the fours earlier, now has Jackson. He'll stay alive. And that will get over a million chips. Three minutes and 15 seconds left on this blind level. And it's kind of hard to step away right now. I know we want to get a commercial break in here shortly. We'll see if the players get on a break. But uh, don't want to miss one here because uh, this could be, uh, we can have an elimination here pretty fast. Button is on this weight action on Shergill right now. Shergill betting under the gun here. Looks like about another 85,000 bet. And Sanborn says, yes, I will. All right. So you're going to know real quick if Sanborn hit this flop or not. King 8 deuce and a quick, really quick check from Sanborn. I'm sure he'll, I'm betting, uh, just put them all in and make him suffer. About 115 on this. And Sandboard's going to come back out on this. Wow. And just making the call. Five of diamonds. I think we do have uh, two clubs on the board. All in on a call. Two pair for Sandborn. With a king eight. Jack ten of clubs, so he's looking to hit and does not. And uh, that is going to double up Sanborn. <laughs> so just when we were saying that those two guys, uh, the short stacks, were going to have to find a way to get through these guys. Farrell doubles up Thistleweight and Shergill doubles up Sanborn. Well played by Sanborn to stay in that one. Well played. All right, we are going to take a quick break here. We've got about a minute left in this blind level. So let's uh, roll that off for you, and we'll be right back here on the Mark Hoke Show. We're live from Deep Stacks Poker Tour in Calgary. So stick around, everybody. We will be right back. Hi everyone, Mark here. If you're a poker player like me and looking for something different and exciting to play, you should give Open Face Chinese Poker a shot. It has just the right mix of skill, luck, plus a huge dose of the fun factor we're all looking for. There's a reason Open Face Chinese Poker has everyone from the recreational player to the top pros hooked on its thrills, action, and unique social interactions you won't find in Hold'em. An incredible game like this has got to be worth checking out. And it's easy to learn, especially by using the ABC Chinese Poker app. Download the ABC Chinese Poker app on iTunes today and find out what everyone's talking about. And if you have questions about the game, tweet at ABC Chinese Poker and they'll be glad to help you along. So join the Open Face Chinese Poker community today with the ABC Chinese Poker app and we'll see you at the tables. One man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. 
That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill fitting clothing. Because, like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit blindsquirrelapparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H O K E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. Poker players, it's time to check out DeejPoker.com. Deej Poker is the unique and clever choice for a new generation of true grinders. Representing the full spectrum of poker players from the novice to the world champion, a true Deej player gives their heart and soul for countless hours at the table to be the best. And Deej Poker Apparel shows everyone who you really are on and off the felt. So join the new generation at DeejPoker.com. That's D E E G poker.com. Deej Poker, the world's newest poker apparel store. I'm Dutch Boyd, two time WSOP bracelet winner, and I want to share my story with you. 12 years as a pro has taught me a lot. For the last year, I've boiled it all down into a tell all book, 90,000 words. In Poker Tilt, I take you on my journey through all the ups and downs that poker has to offer, all the manic highs and hellish lows of every bad beat and lucky draw. So go to www.pokertilt.com to read more, or just go buy the new book on Amazon or Kindle right now. Pokertilt.com. I guarantee you'll enjoy the ride. It's time for you to check out RogueWire.com. News, sports, entertainment, and the internet home of the Mark Hoke Show. Don't wait. Let the sparks fly from your computer at RogueWire.com. And, of course, RogueWire.com is powered by BlueRail.net. For over two years, the Mark Hoke Show has trusted BlueRail.net as their exclusive host, and you can too. Visit BlueRail.net for top-level web hosting, website building and maintenance, one-on-one -on -one customer service, and much more. It's time to get on board with your winning combination. BlueRail.net and RogueWire.com. How far do you want to go? PokerShop.com is your one-stop shop for all your poker and game room needs. PokerShop.com has you covered with an incredible variety of poker chips and supplies, top quality playing cards, plus gaming tables and room accessories, just like you'd find in your favorite casino. And if you're looking to spruce up your man cave, we offer a wide selection of decor options, from lighting to mirrors, and portable bars to bump stools, to make your game room the one all your friends and family will be talking about. So for everything you need to make your your game night a great night. Go to www.pokershop.com and receive 10% off your purchase with the code HOKE. H-O-K-E. You supply your friends. We supply everything else. Live it. Love it. Pokershop.com. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, let's keep it rolling here. Deep Sacks Poker Sword main event, Calgary. Here at Green Eagle Resort, you see only four players. I got about nine billion chips in play. And it was looking pretty bad there for both North Thistle and John Sanborn as they were both under half a million, but they have both managed to double up. And they're trying to give uh, Neil Farrell and Cheech uh, Shergill a fight. And uh, I think just like that, Jeet has gone all in, and uh, wow, Sanborn has pushed his stack in the middle. Actually, it looks like Jeet's got his chips behind the line. 
Nope. So, uh, so Jeet, uh, yeah. But he does get called by, by Farrell. All right, we got Ace King against Ace Queen, and Farrell is ahead. 8 4 deuce. And John's got the Ace of Hearts trying to hang on here. And it is a fourth heart. Oh, my goodness. So John Sanborn has doubled up on a four flush. Oh, a hit for Neil Farrell again. Boy, I'll tell you what, Neil Farrell just seemed like a favorite in this thing and has been ahead so many times and just can't catch a break. You betcha. Unbelievable. But, uh, so Neil Farrell uh, had a shot to get another player out of here but does not do it, and that is a huge hand for Sanborn. We'll give him $2 million. By the way, we uh, on the old Twitter wire... Shaq you will. Good buddy Shaq on, made an appearance on the show today and uh, called in a couple days ago. Tweet in, says, at Mark Hoke Show, at Poker Gray Eagle. Pretty sure I called this when we were talking about Farrell uh, taking the chip, pretty big chip lead. But boy, has it been a roller coaster ride, and now Sanborn gets a big piece of the bad luck train for uh, Neil Farrell. Well, this is, this is anybody's ball game now with four to go. 25,000, 50,000 blinds, 5,000 anties, four players remaining. We are on level 27 in this tournament. Here at Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Unbelievable. Time that commercial break right, though. <laughs> Got to give me points for that one. All right, a button is on Sanborn now. Uh, looks like we have a bet of, uh, looks like 200,000 from Farrell, and, or 105, excuse me. Shergo went over the top big, and Farrell let it go. All right, of course, uh, Matt Savage is getting that epic poker look on his face down there. I can see it. It's like, this needs to end. Matt Savage, everybody. Matt Savage. <laughs> of course, Matt got one of the greatest introductions for a tournament director ever on Friday. Got the lights and the cryo going out for him as he got introduced to the crowd here. And it looks like we have a min raise here from Sanborn. So that's going to go over to Farrell. <laughs> Farrell's almost got to be scared to play a hand right now just the way things have been going. It, and he's, he's had a chance to knock just about everybody out of this tournament. He's going back and forth with Shergill. And, uh, well, so much for that. Farrell goes over the top. Okay, about 255 over the 100,000. 100,000 bet of uh, Sanborn. Because these guys have played this game before. Of course, Farrell, you know, is. Uh, <laughs> You know, he's really, honest to God, played some great poker tonight. Uh, very few mistakes. And now Sanborn has pushed all in and a quick fold. So that'll take a couple more chips away of uh, Neil Farrell. Yeah, kind of hard to say from where, uh, from my vantage point, because I have an overhead shot, so I don't have a real good angle on the chips. Who's in the lead right now? I think Farrell is still holding on there, but that was a pretty uh, pretty big hand for Sanborn a little while ago. Of 
button is on Norm Thistleweight. He's going to fold it up. And a rare blindfold for Neil Farrell. Wow. Sanborn gets a walk. Boy, I haven't seen that for a while. Fortunately for uh, Jeet, uh, uh, Jeet Shergill, he has uh, found a place for that trophy. Or he's not beaten it up. Uh, of course, uh, the trophy for the player of the series was presented to him after uh, we got down to six. That wrapped it up. And they proceeded to just elbow it, throw it around, knock his chip stack over. It was absolutely devastating. But I think he's found the... F <laughs> now that he got that corner to himself, he's uh, found a pretty good spot for it. Fold from Thistleweight. We go to the button of Farrell. I'll go to 105, so just a little over... Uh, a little over double the big blind. Sanborn's grabbing. Boy, <laughs> so Sanborn with that ace queen where he picked up the four flushes and now all of a sudden found some new life. That'll go to 250. Jeet's out of the way, and let's see if Farrell's going to stay in here. And I, I got to give Farrell a ton of credit because a lot of players is going to fold that up. But Farrell, uh, you know, really a lot of players would have just never been able to get through that. Uh, just an uh, unreal run of luck. Man, this has been a roller coaster rather for him like you wouldn't believe. And, you know, still sitting on a big sack. Of course, got a double elimination, but it's had so many chances to knock players out. Hasn't been able to do it. For the most part, they did finally get rid of George, uh, Fraser Short. Knocked out Richard Mullen and Calvin Anderson, same hand. And it's gotten to this point where you have four players left in this one. And uh, button is on Sanborn. He's folded it up, and it's going to go all the way around. And Farrell's going to get a walk. Or actually, Farrell uh, bet under the gun. Pardon me. Button now over to Shergill. That'll put Norm Thistleweight in the small blind and Neil Farrell in the big. Four remain here at uh, the Deep Stacks Poker Tour main event, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Beautiful city, boy. Got the and I got to tell you, got to go to a place called Caesar's Restaurant down here. Steak sandwich. Uh, Kelly Kellner was taking me out, and uh, certainly appreciated that. Kelly's been awesome too up here. Of course, a great host for the Canadian Poker Tour, and you know, really enjoyed spending time with him up here again. Looking forward to some new CPT events starting up in the, the beginning of the year. But, man, that, that thing was off the hook. And cheese bread? Oh, to die for. Check it out. Downtown, downtown uh, Calgary. Caesars. Of course, tactics now, you know, you got to keep these hand ranges open. And, you know, we've seen a lot of different plays from these guys. The Thistleweight has just been the, the guy that has been sitting back. He's going in with fours and, and jacks. That's been about it. We haven't seen much from him. Sanborn's managed to find his way back, but it's been behind a couple of times and doubled up. And realistically, hey, Farrell, Farrell's had a chance to get rid of everybody in this tournament. And, but just, uh, you know, the luck of the draw. And a bunch of big hands here against Jeet Shergill, too. They've just been heavyweight, uh, heavyweight punches going back and forth. Actually, kind of slowing down here now. 250,000, 500,000 ante blinds, 5,000 annies. 24 minutes left on this level. 
Of course, uh, we did have some uh, big developments in sports today going to the baseball. Uh, Oakland manages to hang on, gets a wild card spot. They're going to be headed to Kansas City coming up here and, uh, on Monday. And the winner will be going out to Los Angeles to take on the Angels. Baltimore will face Detroit. Detroit, of course, manages to hang on and win the AL Central. So it should be a good series, Baltimore and Detroit. And of course, I'm an Orioles fan. And then coming back in the National League, Pittsburgh will host San Francisco. Wild card game winner, that one goes out to Washington to take on the Red Hot Nationals. And then on the other side, wow, Dodgers Cardinals start this thing off. Of course, rematch of the NLCS last year. Looking forward to some great baseball playoffs coming up. No Blue Jays Canadians fans. And no offense, that doesn't break my heart. Uh, I've got a raise on the button here from John Sanborn. And Thistlewake makes the call. Now, these two guys, we have not seen them in action against each other almost at all here. King five deuce on the flop. And Sanborn is reaching. But you got to imagine the, with the situation these guys are, even though they've you know, strengthened their positions. Both have to have, probably have to have something here. Uh, Sanborn has bet out 300,000. And Thistleweight has uh, gone all in on this. Mm, Sanborn uh, did not like that. You can see it got him a little uncomfortable in his seat. And it looks like for about, about 810,000. Boy, it's a critical hand for Sanborn. If he gets this, he is back in, really back into this thing. If you, if uh, and if this away gets it right here, he's going to pick up a oh, good. Uh, it's actually a near. Near double up for him for what's in the pot for that eight hundred thousand. So you know, put him uh, that'll put him back around one point six, one point five, one point six somewhere in that ballpark. Big decision here for John Sanborn. I mean, this is a this is a huge opportunity if he decides to take it. But you, you got to imagine with the way as tight as this weight's been. You know, we, we said it before. You know, said it earlier in the hand. He's got to have something. He's going to make the call. Sixes against nines, and the thistle weight is ahead. Ace on the turn. And those nines are good. Runs out to uh, Ace King. <laughs> Excuse me. So this will wait. Will add to his stack. Uh, you know, and not a bad call there, I guess. But uh, eh. well, that King on the board. That's uh, you know as tight as this weight's been. Yeah, I think the sixes. I probably would have let that go. So Sanborn's going to give up some chips, and uh, boy, oh boy. By the way, we do have chop value of $36,922.50. Just thought I'd throw that out there, everybody. Four players remaining in this tournament. Oh, boy, I'll tell you. And it, it has been an action-packed final table. Uh, seat three is uh, Jeet Shergill. Seat five is Norm Thistleway, who just doubled up. Uh, Neil Farrell in seat eight. And John Sanborn in seat nine. Four players left to roll this thing out. Seventy or $60,000. One hundred and seventy-five dollars or seven hundred fifteen dollars for the winner. Second, forty thousand three thirty. Third is twenty-six thousand eight hundred five. 
fourth is nineteen thousand eight hundred and forty. And by the way, if you want to call into the show, it's seven zero two nine nine seven three zero one five. We've got the Skype line open as well. Mark Hoke fifty one fifty is in criminally insane. Like I am criminally insane for doing all this broadcasting. Uh, of course, on the air at two o'clock today, Mountain Time. We're now getting ready to just about hit eleven. Appreciate you guys tuning in from wherever you are over the world. We suit. certainly do appreciate it. It is the Deep Stacks Poker Tour main event here in Calgary at the Griegel Resort and Casino. Matt Savage, tournament director. And Sam Bourne will do a raise it taken on that. Um, also, uh, NFL today. Uh, for the week, uh, first uh, Thursday night, New York Giants knocked off Washington 45-14. Dallas romps on New Orleans. Boy, that's kind of a surprise, 38-17. to The Eagles in a hard-fought battle come up short against the Philadelphia or San Francisco 49ers. Niners get their first win in Levi Stadium, 26-21. Minnesota beats Atlanta 41-28. Bad loss for the Vikes, or for the Falcons. San Diego takes out Jacksonville, 33-14. The Miami Dolphins... Remind Oakland, they still suck, 38-14. Tampa Bay upsets the Steelers. That is a horrible loss for Pittsburgh because Tampa Bay is just putrid. But uh, big loss for Pittsburgh there, 27-24. Detroit knocks off the Jets, 24-17. The Ravens roll Carolina, and I bet they're ready to jump off uh, jump off some bridges there in Carolina. 38-10, Indianapolis beats the Tennessee Titans, 41-17. Houston over Buffalo, 23-17, and Green Bay crushes the Bears in Chicago, 38-17. Ouch. Steve Smith had a big day, by the way, for the uh, Ravens. Carolina was stupid enough to let him go. All right, and back to the action here, and we are looking at Gene Shergill. Puts in a bet of 250000 and this weight has gone all in. And it is a full. So now this weight getting a little froggy over there, too. Oh man, what a what a great finish this is going to be tonight. I know it's gonna be, probably going to take a little while longer than we thought it was going to, but uh, some exciting poker being played out there. I mean, really, you know, looking at these four players, you know, Jeet has been playing uh, aggressive but very steady. Not not many mistakes out of him. Uh, most of the chips that he lost, he lost to uh, Neil Farrell in a couple of hands. Thistleway has just been incredibly patient over there. Farrell has uh, definitely been the table captain here and has just caught some bad breaks, has been ahead just about every time he's been in. Had one had a Jackson against Queens that he lost, but otherwise you know, has just been in great shape for the most part, uh, but just hasn't come up with the wins. And uh, John Sanborn... Kind of lucky to be here right now. Uh, Ace Queens against Ace King, or Ace Queen against Ace King, and managed to four flush it. But he's been able to parlay that into some chips, which, uh, fortunately for him, he sent over to Thistleweight a little while ago, making a call with sixes. And Farrell has gone over the top on Sam Morton's big blind here. And we'll get a fold out of that. So four players still remaining here. 283 entries in this main event. Some other champions, by the way, in the house here at Gray Eagle. Uh, Logan Dunn, winner of event number six, the Pot Lemon Omaha Tournament. And the Grinders Championship uh, right, winner, Ryan Cairns, is also in the house here. Matt Savage's lovely wife, Marianne, over there as well. Hanging out, Tristan Wade watching the action. This is we're coming to you live from the event center here at Gregal Resort and Casino. Beautiful facility. Could turn into somewhat of a poker mecca around here. Very nice spot. And I'm Mark Hoke. Thanks for being with us. We're live 
having a great time. And, of course, don't forget to follow The Mark Hoke Show at Mark Hoke Show on Twitter. The Facebook uh, page, The Mark Hoke Show. We also have a Facebook group if you want to look that up, too. And, of course, uh, podcasts available, markhokeshow.podbean.com, also on iTunes. And, of course, join us Wednesdays on KLEV, 1230 a.m., 3 p.m. Pacific time, and also on the Internet, KLEV, 1230 a.m.com. Our blind still 25,000, 50,000 for about another 14 minutes. 5K any button is uh, now on John Sanborn. Sanborn coming into this thing second in chips to start the day off. He is out of Edmonton. <laughs> Cheat your gill. Just waves his cards away. After a raise from Farrell, and uh, Thistleweight's going to make a call. Boy, Thistleweight uh, waking up all of a sudden here. We got a King 10 4 flop here, two clubs. Thistleweight's going to check in, and the action's going to go over to Farrell. Been a 125. <laughs> wow, and that that was very interesting. There, Thistleweight kind of shook his hand between grabbing chips and mucking his cards. He's going to make the call. Not his spades on the turn. Thistleweight will check again, and that was that was a pretty interesting move. I don't, I don't know if uh, if Farrell saw that or not. He'll check it off. Three spades there. And a check again from Thistleweight. Eh. 305 from Farrell. This way calls. Shows over a king queen pair that's a pair of queens, and that is gonna take the hand down for Farrell. So that one, you know, that and that's kind of a comeback hand there because of course uh, when the you know, that you can you know remember got some information on the nines against sixes. You know, with paint on the board, this way was still willing to push it. So top pair, you know, Farrell got that information and used it. The Farrell that uh, Thistleweight was willing to go with a, you know, a, a decent pair. So nice. Uh, All right, button uh, over to Shergill, under the gun, and uh, Samborn has put out a bet to a 125. Called by Thistleweight. Let's see what Farrell's going to do here, and he's going to stay in there too. So we're near a, near a half million chip pot right off the bat. Ace 10-5 on this block. Check it over to Sanborn, who's going to bet out uh, 175. This will wait calls. You know, this has been very interesting for this will wait here. As he's just been, these are diamonds on the turn. Check. Check from Sanborn. Six of hearts, so not much out there. He'll check it down. And it's a 9-10 for Thistleweight, and it pairs that 10, and he's good. And 
and that you know, and that honestly may not have been a bad just check down there from uh, from Sanborn. Normally, uh, I'm not big on that play, but when you consider the fact that we've seen Thistleweight make a couple big calls with second, third pair, uh, you know, not having anything there, uh, you know, e even a bet may not have gotten Thistleweight off that hand. So, uh, you know, pretty uh, pretty disciplined play by Sanborn using the information he's gotten at the table. I have four players left still. <laughs> Why is it that every time I show up at a Matt Savage run tournament, I end up uh, sitting here forever? <laughs> it is the Savage Jinx, everybody. So we're in our ninth hour of broadcasting. Four players left. Lots of money on the line, though, and I'll tell you what, I'll sit here forever if I can win that $60,000. Fourth place, uh, 19,840. That's the minimum for one of these guys here. 26,805 for third, 40,330 for second, and 60,715 for the winner. see a little action here between Thistleweight and Farrell. Not for long. It goes check and uh, check on that flop from Farrell and Thistleweight takes it. All right. Well, we're going to take another break and we'll come back. Uh, you know, if something does happen, we'll interrupt here and hop on in for you. We're going to get another commercial break. And make sure you take care of all our great sponsors, like our brand new ones, uh, ABC Chinese Poker. Get that app. And join the ABC Chinese, the uh, Open Face Chinese Poker family, and also of course our good friends at PokerShop.com. Uh, all sorts of great poker supplies, tables, bars, whatever you need, they've got it. So check them out uh, at PokerShop.com. Let's step back, take a break, and we'll be right back here on the Mark Oak Show. Thank you for joining us live from Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. We'll be right back. PokerShop.com is your one-stop shop for all your poker and game room needs. PokerShop.com has you covered with an incredible variety of poker chips and supplies, top quality playing cards, plus gaming tables and room accessories, just like you'd find in your favorite casino. And if you're looking to spruce up your man cave, we offer a wide selection of decor options, from lighting to mirrors, and portable bars to bump stools, to make your game room the one all your friends and family will be talking about. So for everything you need to make your your game night a great night. Go to www.pokershop.com and receive 10% off your purchase with the code HOKE. H-O-K-E. You supply your friends. We supply everything else. Live it. Love it. Pokershop.com. I'm Dutch Boyd, two-time WSOP bracelet winner, and I want to share my story with you. Twelve years as a pro has taught me a lot. For the last year, I've boiled it all down into a tell-all book, 90,000 words. In Poker Tilt, I take you on my journey through all the ups and downs that poker has to offer, all the manic highs and hellish lows of every bad beat and lucky draw. So go to www.pokertilt.com to read more, or just go buy the new book on Amazon or Kindle. Right now, pokertilt.com. I guarantee you'll enjoy the ride. It's time for you to check out RogueWire.com. News, sports, entertainment, and the internet home of the Mark Hoke Show. Don't wait. Let the sparks fly from your computer at RogueWire.com. And, of course, RogueWire.com is powered by BlueRail.net. For over two years, the Mark Hoke Show has trusted BlueRail.net as their exclusive host, and you can too. Visit BlueRail.net for top-level web hosting, website building and maintenance, one-on-one -on -one customer service, and much more. It's time to get on board with your winning combination. BlueRail.net and RogueWire.com. How far do you want to go? Poker players, it's time to check out DeejPoker.com. Deej Poker is the unique and clever choice for a new generation of true grinders. Representing the full spectrum of poker players from the novice to the world champion, a true Deej player gives their heart and soul for countless hours at the table to be the best. And Deej Poker Apparel shows everyone who you really are on and off the felt. So join the new generation at DeejPoker.com. That's Deej 
e e g poker.com Deej Poker, the world's newest poker apparel store. Hi everyone, Mark here. If you're a poker player like me and looking for something different and exciting to play, you should give Open Face Chinese Poker a shot. It has just the right mix of skill, luck, plus a huge dose of the fun factor we're all looking for. There's a reason Open Face Chinese Poker has everyone from the recreational player to the top pros hooked on its thrills, action, and unique social interactions you won't find in Hold'em. An incredible game like this has got to be worth checking out. And it's easy to learn, especially by using the ABC Chinese Poker app. Download the ABC Chinese Poker app on iTunes today and find out what everyone's talking about. And if you have questions about the game, tweet at ABC Chinese Poker and they'll be glad to help you along. So join the Open Face Chinese Poker community today with the ABC Chinese Poker app and we'll see you at the tables. One man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high-quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit BlindSquirrelApparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. Yeah, just like to remind everybody, I got a ride to catch it. Uh, let's see, uh, 11 hours. So, if you guys would like to get this over with something, I certainly appreciate it. Nah, I'm going to play all the games, and it's all good. We got all that. Four players remaining here at three rooms over the season. Unfortunately, like I said, we cannot turn the camera onto the table. Kind of a shame. But four players left in the main, and we're looking at uh, Cheat Shergill uh, in seat three. Seat five is Norm Thistleweight. Seat eight, Neil Farrell. And seat nine, John Sanborn. Uh, right now, chips are pretty tight. Um, still got to give Farrell the edge here, uh, followed by Jeet. But both Sanborn and, and Thistleweight have uh, gotten some big double ups and hanging in there. And we'll have a Jack 6 3 2 hearts between Jeet and Sanborn. And Jeet. Kind of an odd bet. 50,000 bets the minimum? Uh, Sam Borden will not bet the minimum. <laughs> 175, and that's good enough. Uh, not not sure what that move was by Jeet there with the uh, min bet. Right now, uh, does appear still Neil Farrell. We've got a double elimination to get us to four. Still out in front. Uh, looks like Jeet Farrell, uh, excuse me, Jeet uh, Shergill is in second. And got to give the edge in third there to Sandorn and Thistleweight still in fourth place. But all the guys have enough chips to do a little bit of damage here. I 
right? And under the gun, it's going to be Neil Farrell. Goes to 105. That's been his uh, standard bet and a call from Sanborn. Jeet's going to get in there. Are we going to have a family pot? We are. All right. Let's all play. There we go. First time. Now let's put an ace, king, queen flop out there with a couple of suits. and Close enough. Ace, queen, jack. That should get some action going. Give me the Daniel Negreanu cookie for the day. Boy, this could, this could be interesting. These four guys aren't going to stay in there with the, in a situation like that with nothing. Uh, checks around over to Farrell in the hijack. Bets uh, 225. Fold, fold. And fold, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, that's, having, that's half a million chips right there. I mean, that, that's, that's a pretty significant pot. All right, and we have moved the blinds up. Uh, we have just hit level number. Uh, bear with me a second. We'll get that uh, for you. Level number 28, I believe, if I get this right. Yep, level 28, 30,000, 60,000 blinds, 10,000 in Andes. Kind of got to have a feeling this thing could be over the next couple of levels. But uh, uh, that's a big one. So right away, 90 plus in blinds plus 40 in annies. 130,000 chips in that pot right off the bat. Got to expect we're going to see raises around like 125 to 150. So these pots are going to build pretty quickly. And uh, once again, the lack of a break here. Up, And I think Matt's signaling... Uh, G was going to get up to go to the bathroom again, and, uh, and it looks like Matt's going to stop the clock. So there we go. It's been a while since we would had a break in here, and uh, players certainly deserve it. What a great uh, and a wild battle it's been. Uh, that, uh, Matt trying to get them to pause the clock here, and it has stopped. So uh, these guys will uh, get about five or ten minutes to take a break, which means – we're going to take a break. So uh, let's step back, and uh, while the players are on break, we're going to take a breather, too. So stick around, everybody. Final four here at Greagle Resort and Casino. We'll be right back after the player break. So keep your eyes peeled. We'll have that uh, graphic up there for you and play the tunes as soon as we're coming back.
This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. I'm hustling it up a little bit there. Ooh. All right. Uh, chip counts going into that last hand that just got played. Gee, sure you yeah. Was it 1.55? Norm Thistle, it actually got up to 2.105. Pretty impressive run for him. Uh, Neil Farrell, 3.25. And our final player in there, John Sanborn at 1.58. And Sanborn just lost about 400,000 chips. Plus on this last hand to Jeet. So that'll swing that around a little bit. Just got to talk to Calvin Anderson in the hallway. Had a lot of great things to say about uh, about Neil and Neil Farrell. I mean, and really very well deserved too. Bear with me for one second. I'm just updating some notes. All right, and just to give you the reset on this. Blinds at 30,000, 60,000, 10,000, Annie. Four players remain. Wow, and, and Neil has just gone over the top of uh, of Jeet. And Jeet open folds nines. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, I don't know about that. I don't know about that one. With the hand range that uh, the Neil's shown, and of course, uh, you know that of course that last hand put G uh, right around the two million mark. Of course, not a not a whole lot of chips in play at this point. You know, we're looking at uh, about uh, you know, around nine million. So we got about thirty percent there for Neil. Four-hander right now, and uh, G. Sheriel is on the button. The winner of the Player of the Series award had that wrapped up when uh, got down to six. On the button, actually, or Norm Thistleway to uh, you know managed to get up to two point one, and then we get a raise from him. And Farrell right now makes the call on Thistleweight's raise. To about 130. So players just going a little bit over the minimum, about 1.1, 1.2. Jack, 3-2. Couple of diamonds, and that will go to Thistleweight. We'll bet 300,000. And Neil Farrell, who is really to me has been the most impressive player at this table. Out of Glasgow, Scotland. Of course, Scotland, if you missed it, just uh, recently had a vote for their independence from the United Kingdom. Decided not to break away, about 55 45 margin. So Neil's still a subject of the UK. Uh, that's his current citizenship. And Neil goes over the top here. 625. Actually goes back to Thistleweight. All in and a call. Oh, Jack Queen for Thistleweight. Jack 8. For Farrell. And 7 on the turn. 3. So that queen is going to play, and uh, this will wait. Doubles up, and that is a big hit to Farrell right there. And all of a sudden, that that should put Norm Thistlewaite into the lead. Unbelievable. I mean, Thistlewaite has just been tight as a nun over there. No offense to the nuns out there, but what a huge hand that is.
and Norm Thistleweight doubles, and that's going to put him around uh, around four point uh, four point three. And Neil is going to slide down into about one point two five. And all of a sudden, we just went just at a huge swing. So that should put Thistleweight out in the lead. Uh, and let's see, I'll put should put Jeet in second. And that may have even made Neil a short stack in here. Awfully close. So Neil Farrell has just been playing well. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Matt, Matt Savage doing some great singing to me, and I'm like all deaf right now. <laughs> okay, now I, I, I do think that Jeet is starting to have some discussions at this point. Of course, uh, kind of surprised that Chop hadn't come up uh, yet, but I think Jeet was trying to say something to somebody here. But we're, you know, honestly, with with only about nine million chips in play, and thirty sixty blinds. I mean, this goes up to fifty one hundred. You know, we're we're kind of getting into crapshoot range a little bit. Not totally, but still, it's. Uh, Kind of a tough spot for everybody here. Now this weight's going to fire 160, so now he's getting a little froggy out there. Going over the blinds here, and and Neil has gone all in just like that. <laughs> and a quick fold. I'll tell you what, this Neil Farrell is one of the most resilient players I have ever seen. He just has not stopped no matter what happens to him. Very impressive play by Neil Farrell. Just seems to know what to do in every situation. I'm, I really like what I'm seeing out of this guy. We're at 11.30, mountain time. Uh, nine and a half hours into play on this uh, day five. Or day three, or day two, excuse me. Wow. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a long, after, or a long evening. Four players left, 30,000, 60,000, 10,000, Andy. Winner sixty thousand plus dollars. And the grinder has now joined the fun. The grinder in the house of Tristan Wade. Under the gun raise here from Thistle Wade. And Gene is going to call. Four to go, or well, two to the flop here, excuse me. Uh, A7-6. We'll check it. Another ace on the turn. And it looks like we do have a couple clubs out there on the board, too. Both check again. Queen on the river. I don't know whatever Jeet's chewing out there, but I'll tell you what, must be pretty darn good. He's got a, he's got his jaw rolling. He does check and a bet and a fold of a jack deuce up. So Norm Thistleweight. Probably would have said he's a pretty unlikely champion at this point, but he has now got things under control. And the one, the one interesting part for Norm, very tight player. Uh, it would be an intriguing heads-up matchup if it got in there with Neil. Of course, uh, picked up a lot of those chips from Neil here. Both hit it, both hit top pair, but uh, Norm out kicked him. All right, and of course, uh, we don't want to thank uh, Great Resort and for Casino for being such gracious hosts up here. Had a great time. Got to recommend it. Anytime they get a series, you got to come up here, no matter Steep Stacks, Canadian Poker Tour, whomever. You are going to have a blast. They treat everybody so well. 
Great cash games up here, too. A lot of action. Food's fantastic. You'll definitely enjoy a trip to Calgary for sure. And Sanborn has gone all in here. Or 805,000 gets the folds, and Sanborn will take that. Good to see everybody. Only, uh, only nine more. <laughs> probably nine more hours ago. This is going now. We'll 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 should be done fairly soon. But uh, once again, we're thirty thousand, sixty thousand blinds, ten thousand any next level, forty thousand, eighty thousand, and then we get up to fifty thousand, one hundred thousand with a fifteen thousand any. Forty minute blind levels. Minimum payout for these guys. 19,840 for whoever goes out next. Third, 26,805. Second, 40,330 and 60,715. And Jeet is going to limp in on the button. Second time he's tried to do a min bet uh, limp kind of thing here. And I don't know. I don't know if I'd let Neil Farrell see a flop for free. Jack 10-5. Farrell's going to check, and here comes Jeet. Let's see if these cards get kicked in here. 135, but I tell you, it's... Uh, and yeah, Farrell will let it go. But an interesting tactic there by Jeet. Should be around uh, a little over 2 million at this point. Boy, what a wild win this has been. We have seen some insane hands on this table. Listen, unfortunately, because of Alberta gaming rules, we are not allowed to show you the table, so I'm bringing you the commentary as best I can. Paint the picture. You guys get to stare at me all night. Hope you love it. And we'll have this weight on the button. Jeet is going to bet out... Uh, yeah. Limps in. Looks like some guys asking him about his chips there, too. He's got both of those guys covered, so. Nobody, either person asking about that. Uh, if you're going to push, you're going to be all in. But interesting play by Jeep, just limp, trying to limp in again under the gun. Raised to 230. Man, Jeep will make the call. Interesting, uh, Farrell uh, went back and checked his cards. It's like King 10, 5, a couple of hearts. Check in an all in from Jeet. And we're getting a count on this. One point four six back for Jeet Shergill. Should be enough to cover Farrell, but I, I don't think Farrell well. You know, Farrell's kind of rocking back in his seat a little bit. He's thinking about this. Kind of a weird spot too, because of course uh, on this pre flop, Shergill limped in. Farrell playing with his chips, trying to figure it out, and he is going to fold. And Shergo couldn't throw those cards away quick enough. Four players left, guys. Four left. And of course, if you guys were wondering why I'm looking over to my left, uh, the there is a we have a projection screen over the uh, over the stage here where I'm uh, checking everything out. So sorry if I'm not because the table's actually off to my right, the screen's off to my left. So. <laughs> So I'm kind of stuck in the middle with you, as the kids like to say. Uh, 
Man, I'm starting to see some uh, a few more players come, bring it coming on in here to the event center. Of course, first time they've been at the event center here in Calgary. Of course, amazing city. Well, we got to got to see a lot of it on this trip, and it is just a terrific place. Of course, host of the 1988 Olympic Games, first time, shockingly, first time the Winter Olympics were ever held in Calgary. Of course, a really cool place got to drive by last night, the Olympic Plaza, including that big Space Needle-looking tower. Oh, of course, a very popular destination around here for everybody uh, wanting to do some winter sports and got some great facilities. And by the way, those of you who wanted luge, if I get to come to Calgary in the winter, I think I'm going to go lugeing. See, see how badly I can get hurt. Just as long as they don't. I guess they'd have to put me in one of those suits. Hope they have one big enough for that. They can do all sorts of stuff here. We're skiing, ski jumping, uh, speed skating. Really nice for fly fishing. And they, they actually hosted in 2009 the World Water Skiing Championship. Of course, home of the Calgary Flames, the Calgary Stampeders of the CFL. The Calgary Hitmen, of course, the minor league hockey team, one of the minor league hockey teams here. Of course, they're also very famous for their professional wrestlers, home of the legendary Hart family and the infamous dungeon for Stu Hart. Of course, Bret Hart, former WWE champion. But other guys come out of here, too, you know, that trained in that camp, like superstar Billy Graham. Late Brian Pillman, the British Bulldogs, Edge, Christian, the Greg the Hammer Valentine, Chris Jericho. And of course, uh, can't forget uh, the late Owen Hart, of course, uh, the tragic passing where he fell from a fell from a harness that wasn't fastened properly at a WWE pay per view event. So uh, a lot of people still means a lot to people in Calgary. So we do miss you, Owen. It's just a really rich history here in Calgary and, and uh, you know, just a beautiful downtown area. You would really love it. And so highly recommend you come down and check it out. Especially you poker players. I'll tell you what, there's money to be made in them, their cash rooms. All right, so we still sit four players left. 16 minutes left on the 30,000, 60,000 blind level. And we are shaping up for one interesting finish up here as Norm Thistleweight has managed managed to outkick Neil Farrell and has for the first time took the chip lead a little while ago. Oh, and <laughs> Farrell had bet out and a all in from John Sanborn and got nothing. It has just been a, a tough night for Farrell. Really, uh, you know, did get a double elimination and knocked out uh, Fraser Short in seventh place, and those two guys were duking it out for a while. Short to got, was getting the, uh, pardon the French, the uh, short end of the stick for most of that. We have four left. This weight out of this on the button is Neil Farrell. Goes over the and basically min raise and will take the pot down. So Neil Farrell has been in positions of strength most of the night, but now he finds himself short stacked and trying to find his way home on this one. Really, in in, in all candor, uh, I I have to say that Neil was the best player at this table tonight. Uh, but certainly, you know, some other guys uh, made some good showings. I mean, Richard Mullen fought cr like crazy. Jason Ross, just not a lot of chips when he came here. Calvin Anderson played very well. Of course, uh, Jason Ross out in 10th place in this thing. 
Uh, ninth place uh, was Mark Wilson. Eighth place was Drew McGregor. Seventh place, Fraser Short. Sixth place, Richard Mullen. Fifth place, Calvin Anderson. And uh, that's the road that we've taken to get to this uh, final four here. As we're getting ready to approach our 10th hour of play here on day two. They've given Tristan Wade the microphone, by the way, uh, call on the table. I'm not sure if uh, that was a good decision by Matt Savage to give Tristan the mic. Not sure. Janine D. walking by, everybody. Okay. Tristan Wade and the Grinder and Matt Savage having a little conversation while there's some poker going on over here. Thirty thousand, six thousand action over to Sanborn. He's going to fold under the gun. Button to cheat, Sheriel. He's going to put in a raise. Flips an ace of spades over as he takes it down. Shergill, the last man standing from Calgary. All these guys from different places. Uh, of course, Farrell from Scotland. Listed it from Glasgow. Shergill from Calgary. Sandboard from Edmonton. Of course, big rivalry between the Edmonton and Calgary players around here. Uh, the likes of which you've never seen. North Thistleweight, out of one of the coolest town names I've ever heard Rocky Mountain House, Alberta. Under the gun, and this one, uh, Shergill's going to fold it up. Fold from Thistleweight back to Farrell, goes all in and a quick fold. So this uh, continues on. It's never going to end, kids. <laughs> hey, Janine Deeb's over here. This is exciting. You guys have been staring at my ugly mug for hours. We finally get some beauty on this broadcast. Uh, Thank God. Late night. Late night. Oh, we've got a long way to go, Janine. Sweet camera. Thanks. Yeah, we do have a long way to go. But and to think Matt Savage wanted to do hour-long levels. Ooh. That would have been bad. Yeah, I'm glad we didn't do that. Well, this has obviously been a very successful event for you guys at Deep Stacks. And, you yeah, know, and for Alberta overall. Yeah. Pretty sure this is one of their top two uh, best field sizes they've had for an event. Pretty close, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they, it's been fantastic in here and, you know, a great venue, too. I mean, I'm sure you, I know you guys are planning on coming back soon, and rightfully yeah. so. Great venue at the doorstep of the Rockies, so you get to go hang out in Banff National Park. Yeah, just moving a little closer. Oh. Do you need my headphones on? I yeah, we're I, good. We're good. Do I know how to work these things? I don't yeah, even know. No, just put it on your head. We're good. This is low budget stuff around here. Okay, now I got to ask you about this little uh, this little trip. Yeah. That you guys had this morning. Now you had a great time. Oh, this morning downtown. Yeah. Oh no, the uh, little oh, trip out to uh, or Banff. two days ago out to Banff. Yeah. yeah. Um, had a lot of fun. Got to see some beautiful things up there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Janine, really. Speed what? trap. You got caught by the Canadian oh. police. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I got a nice little speeding ticket. Is, is it fun being uh, breaking the uh, breaking the law outside of the United States well, of America? Here's the worst part. <laughs> they barely said anything to us, and the cops here, they give you, like, that whole nice, oh, I'm a Canadian, I'm really nice, but I'm actually being kind of an asshole secretly yeah. in my responses to you. Uh, be careful. They, they, you know, they might hear you. Ugh. Well, you, you do not want cavity searches at the, uh, at the customs he border. He smiled the whole time. Yeah, and I got harassed at customs for the first time. Immigration. Yeah, what happened about yeah, you? Immigration said something pulled about me that in the too. room. Man, I had a trip with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It you, was just bad. I get there, and they're like, what are you doing here? Why were you? He I said, I'm, I'm going to Gray Eagle. Okay, what are you doing there? Said, There's an event. Well, why were you here in July? Because I was meeting with Gray Eagle poker staff and just getting to know the property and getting ready to host this event do you have proof 
Proof of what? <laughs> Can you give me contact information? Yeah. Uh, do you need their names? Or are you asking me for their emails and phone numbers or what? Oh, God. So then they made me pull out my business cards and uh, they made me pull up a flyer for the event to show them that I'm actually coming here to Great Eagle. And then I got a nice $160 ticket on the way back from Banff National Park. You haven't gotten through customs going back yet. <clears throat> you do realize this. Nope. You've still got a, you still got one more hurdle. They to freaking climb. love me. Well, you know what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to marry a guy named Smith. Smith. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you know what's funny is I've never been stopped, ever. And I've been traveling since I was four. I've never been stopped at customs, immigration, anything, ever. So it's not the last name. It's just because I got a girl, and she was a biatch. I'm sorry. But the best part is the guy <laughs> next to me, he, the guy was talking really loud, the customs guy, and he's like, so, sir, did you buy your ticket? He's like, yeah, I bought my ticket. How much did you pay for your ticket? Tell me now. He's like, I don't know. I have to look at the receipt. He's like, I'm going to need you to send, I'm going to need to send you to the immigration office. Oh. He's like, what? Wow. I, I told you I could pull up the receipt. So I think they were just on a mission. Yeah, it sounds like a bad day. As, as well as so were the police on the side of the road. They literally stand in the middle of the road and just flag people over. And I'm surprised no one's been killed because they just flag you over. They already have it like half written out. They slam you the ticket and you go on your way. It's less than 10 minute process. And there was four cars lined up behind me. Well, you know, it's mass production. It was like flashing dollar bills. Hey, at they they got to pay for that health care somehow, don't they? No joke. <laughs> but Banff was awesome aside from that. Oh, my God. Well, of course, uh, you guys are going to be coming back to Edmonton in a couple of weeks, so you'll be making another trip here to the Great White North for pretty soon. Yeah, we not even a couple of weeks, like seven days, I think. Um, yeah, we're going up to Yellowhead, which is in Edmonton, and we're hoping to go to Jasper National Park, but it's like four hours from the property, so that's not going to happen. That, that's a lot of time to get a speeding ticket, too. Yeah. What would happen if you got a second one? There's going to be a flag on you for sure. Yeah, I don't even know what the rules are here. Yeah, don't, don't have somebody else drive. Yeah, what a bad idea. I should totally <laughs> shot one of the guys drive. Not like they care. See, I, I'm amazed. You definitely have the best chance of getting out of the speeding ticket yeah, with anybody in the car. Says. The guy didn't even talk to me. He just said, huh, good luck at the tables. Hopefully you can make some money and run your luck better or something like that. And Ooh. I just looked at him and said, God, what a burn. That is a needle right there. Super needle. Yeah, well... We of course, uh, you know, we had some great play at this table. Boy, it's been a wild final table, hasn't it? We got two gingers at this table. I'm not sure if you guys have missed that, but... Yeah, I mentioned that. We had ginger on ginger crime yeah. a lot. Fraser Short is very proud of his gingerness, and that's why he's rooting for Neil, because it's the brotherhood. Those guys, uh, and, you know, that was really... If, if he wouldn't have been messing with uh, with Neil tonight, might have had a much better chance, because he just could not beat him, other than that first hand. It was almost like he won that first hand all in on the final table, and then... Yeah. Neil just said, I don't appreciate that. Yeah, Neil had a good tweet, too, because he was talking about playing in W Coop, and uh, he couldn't run his luck there, but he's like, but I am one out of ten here at Grey Eagle. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not so bad. Yeah, I mean, and, of course, uh, we have our player of the series here yeah. in uh, Jeet's uh, share guild. What do they get for winning player of the series? Uh, so for the player of the series, you get a buy-in to uh, one of the events here at Grey Eagle. I'm not exactly sure what the uh, – Let's look. We have our little book here. I think it's in here. You get a two-night stay. Book. I should have looked at that. You get a two-night stay here at Grey Eagle. You also get a VIP experience at a WPT final table. Um, but, you know, there's so many final tables around the nation, around the country. I'd take uh, the one in Sonia. Everywhere. Sonia yeah. would be the one I'd pick. How do you know about Sonia? I know about Sonia. That place is awesome. I went there for our first event. Oh, you're so lucky you got to go. It was insane. It was like Aruba, but better. And it was an MGM property, and everyone was so nice. And the best part is they have the strongest liquor you will ever try Perfect. in your life. Perfect. So this is great. We go to dinner one night, and literally, you know, I'm surrounded by the people that are running this event in China. You have everyone is – the event was sponsored by Red Bull for them locally. They're like, okay, so here's your Red Bull. Here's your water. Here's your wine glass. Um, would you like some white wine? And I'm like, well, they poured me red wine. So, no, I'm good. Thank you. And then the lady goes to the guy next to me who's running it. Would you like some white wine? He's like, oh, yes, please pour the whole table white wine. And I'm like, well, why would they give us red wine? Oh, no. Do you know what white wine is in in China? No, what is it? It is basically moonshine, Oh. but way crazier. It looks like it's in a flammable 
like uh what do you call it the when you're gonna light something like the oh my god like it's, a late. Flame it's thrower, late uh, uh, a tiki kerosene torch, it looks uh, like a kerosene bottle okay and it's just they literally have a shot glass that's this thin and this tall because it's that strong wow and it tastes like gasoline your mouth is on fire and it's over 100 proof, I believe. And I think it's banned everywhere, even in most places in China, but not there. Huh. And we got down. Who know? Who knew? They could drink. It's it awesome. <laughs> it was really good. Well, I'm glad you got to go. I, I saw Sonya on the World's <laughs> Strongest Man competition when they had it there a while back, and I've always wanted to go. It's really cool. Kind of like Hawaii for China. Yeah, it really is. And I went up to Beijing right after, and Beijing, it was... Uh, I think like it snowed the day before I got there. It was uh, 28 degrees, and in Sonia it was like 80, and I was wearing a dress every day, just hanging out on the beach, working on the tan. Nice. Yeah, total opposites. Very, it was cool. Very cool. Highly recommend it. The food's a little different. I've been to a lot of third world countries, and uh, I definitely struggled eating there. I'm sorry. But they had good duck, Peking duck. That's what you, that's what you need. You duck. a fan of Peking oh, duck? Oh, I love Peking duck. Really good there. Awesome stuff. Yeah. So where do you go after this? Home. That's nice. Back to Las Vegas for a little while. So. How long? No word? Um, in a few weeks. A few nice. Weeks. I'll be back on the road. But yeah, I'm going to get to enjoy some time at home finally. Is this your first time here? Second. Oh. I was up here for the CPT event. The, oh, that's uh, right. That's the end right. of July. So. so was it in here in the event center? No, this was the first time they've had a, an event here in the event center that they mm-hmm. got cleared. So. Yeah, the event center is pretty sweet, you guys. It is awesome. It is awesome. Boy, and you just hope this, you know, this uh, grows because, boy, you'd love to see this whole room just filled every day. I mean, yeah, it would be awesome. There's so much to do around here, too. We did go to downtown today. This morning, it was pretty quiet. But there is so many pubs. Mm-hmm. And I guess they have a lot of uh, breweries and, like, uh, craft breweries and stuff. It's, it's really growing here in Calgary. So there was a ton of places we wanted to stop by. But it was Sunday morning. It was quiet. So we went to a place called Locals and watched football. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I saw a guy with a Detroit Lions jersey on. I said, oh, my God, does <laughs> anyone go. actually root for the Detroit Lions? And the well, bartender's like, he's from Europe. He doesn't know any better. Oh, <laughs> well, that makes sense then. Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> no one roots for them. Oh, Even my. people from Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on, they've got five fans. Yeah, maybe. No, I can't pick on the Lions too badly. <laughs> Haven't they suffered enough? Probably. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, we're still going four-handed here. Who do you like? I, I mean, really I, know, I know the chips kind of changed a little bit, but who do you like? Yeah, I was going to say, I really thought Neil was making moves there for a little while. We did have the double elimination. It was looking good. Uh, now it's really slowed down. I don't know. I mean, he probably has the most experience at the table. But, you know, those those old guys got the wisdom. They do. <laughs> They've probably been playing before well before he was born i don't know it's gonna be a toss-up i'm always surprised by these events you never know what's gonna happen no you don't but how's your dad doing by the way he's good uh actually he got stuck in mexico when there was a hurricane that hit uh so then he somehow ended up in mexico city because he couldn't get a flight out of cabo and i don't know where he is now but he's playing w coop oh good for him (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's all i know oh that's awesome but I think he's doing well. Good times. Oh, boy. Well, hey, we're just, well, it looks like we're just getting ready to go to that next blind level. So I think that's, uh, that is the 5100, I believe. Sorry, that, I flipped that should your get book. This, that's okay. That should get this uh, moving along here a little bit. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, we got, uh, yeah. I'm right. Uh, 5100, 15,000, Annie, and 9 million chips in place. So we should expect some blood to spill here pretty soon. Yeah, looks like there's some shorties. Yeah, and uh, of course, uh, Neil nursing that short stack after losing that uh, Jackie to Jack Queen on uh, with uh, Thistleweight. And it looks like uh, we also, uh, of course, once again, couldn't can't show the table, not allowed. Oh, Thanks really? Thanks, Alberta. Yep, I can't even put a camera on it. Oh, so sorry, guys. Been, so everybody's been staring at me. That's why you being here is so awesome for <laughs> listening. Um and well, it's a really nice table. Oh, it's a beautiful table. And we have a lot of big screens showing the event yeah. around the property, even in the bars and stuff. Oh, it's in the bars, too? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Good. Size. So if you guys are around, just come down and hang out. Yeah, we'd love to see you. Uh, John Sandboard looks like he's in a little bit of trouble over there. But, boy, uh, this will wait. Uh, got some chips, and getting Making chips out of him is not going to be easy. 
He's uh, been the, definitely the tightest player out of this group. So Always got to have one knit. I mean, tight player. <laughs> well, a knit is on the verge of trying to win $60,000, so that's not bad. Don't blame them. 1K buy-in, not so bad. There's a good rail here tonight. Yeah. You know what's funny is that everyone says that Calgary is really quiet on the weekends and crazy busy during the week because of the oil and gas companies. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So yeah. many people come in and then they just bounce. So it's funny because the casino is pretty dead, and then during the week it's been so packed when we were here Thursday. Yeah, it was, definitely. Yeah, I've seen it pretty busy on a Tuesday and Wednesday night in here too. I mean, it's just this is just a great place. I really love this, uh, love this facility. I mean, you know, it's not like the Bellagio or anything like that, but uh, you know, for for the size that this facility is, uh, there's so much to do, and everybody treats you great. I mean, yeah, it might not be the Bellagio, but they got chocolate fountains versus the fountains, and I'll take chocolate any day. Yeah. They literally have a bunch of fruit, and you just pick it and dip it under the chocolate fountain, and you can go back as many times as you want. It's awesome. God, it's not, it must be nice to have a great metabolism. I no, remember. I remember trapped those fat days. kid. I eat and eat and eat, and then I just go work out. Not a great metabolism. Just work out a lot. Yeah, we got a little bit of a pot going here between uh, Shergill and uh, Thistleweight. Well, I'm starting to, I, you'd think I've, I've said these names a million times tonight. I'm starting to get a little tired, I think. Yeah, I haven't even looked at the clock because I'm not sure I want to know. 11.59. Oh, my God. So. 10 hours coming up for this. Ryan show. has to leave for the airport at 4.30. I have to leave for the airport at 5.30. We got three hours of sleep the day we went to Banff, and I think we slept three hours last night. I don't know. Oh, we do have a call on this. And on a ace queen queen ace ten board, Shergill showed the showed the queen, and it was good enough. Boy, not sure what uh, Thistleweight was doing there, but then maybe hit a straight or something like that. But that'll take a little chunk out. Not nothing too major. There it was only three hundred thousand dollar bid on the river. I'm liking the white chips. Boy, that makes it easy. White, yellow, <laughs> orange. Yeah, it's very distinct. Which yeah. is which. It's not like gray, purple, and black. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot easier to count. Oh, but I, I just cannot believe we've been forehanded this long. I mean, uh, especially, uh, you know, as aggressive as Farrell has been tonight, uh, and Shergill certainly hasn't been shy in there either, uh, but still sitting there and just waiting for one more guy to drop and getting pretty close once again to a $50,000, $100,000 blind level. The best part level is... Level. Neil was only in town just because he wanted to visit his girlfriend. Oh, is that He's sweet? like, meh, I guess I'll play the event. <laughs> Does she get half? <laughs> I don't Did know, probably. We'll have to ask about that when it's over. I mean, there's no ring on it, so I'd probably say no. Yeah, but. all right. That's, uh, that's a good call. <laughs> yeah, maybe a nice <laughs> dinner or something. By the way, see, Tristan's got the mic down there. Um, good idea or bad idea? You know, maybe he'll throw out some beats and start rapping for everyone yeah. as he's sitting on the sidelines. He had a great time at the uh, Calgary Stampeders game last night. He was really getting into it. Was he? Yeah. He was really getting into it at the hockey game, too. You know, I, I guess because he roots for the Miami Dolphins, there's not much to cheer for. So I wasn't even yeah. sure Tristan knew about sports. Yeah. <laughs> Him and Grinder were definitely trying to get at it in hockey. Yeah, there is. What? Grinder's got like these sweatsuit pants on right now. I'm not even sure. Yeah, I don't know, man. The ankles are up too. Oh, we can see the ankles. I think his butt's too big to wear those. Uh, He's got some skinny ankles. I'll, I'll let you make that evaluation. The ankles, I do question. Skinny. I couldn't even got away with that in the '80s, you know. <laughs> He's got his like Euro sweats. <laughs> Him and Tristan actually have matching Euro sweats. <laughs> He's looking up here like, what the hell are you guys talking about? So I do a deep stacks blog, yeah. vlog, video, uh -huh. video log. What? What was that? Oh, he didn't say, I'll send you pictures. Uh, he wants pictures of Banff National Park. He's like, oh, you guys didn't tell me you were going. Did I would have gone. Yeah, send him a picture of the cop too. There's, Yeah, I, I do have it, by the way. Oh, really? Okay. So here's the thing. I have a video blog. And uh, there's some good stuff in it this trip. <laughs> you know, cops in the U.S. don't like to be filmed, but not when they don't know what's happening. Yeah, there you go. And I got some good footage of uh, Grinder passed out after the hockey game. Can see really far down his mouth. 
Who knew? I won't even say about the picture I saw of the grinder. I, I'd like to take that and just take that memory and just burn Oh, it, that please. wasn't actually him. Oh, it wasn't? Okay. No, battle, but. Thank God. That guy was real hairy. I feel bad for that dude. <laughs> if it wasn't grinder, thank God. I don't God. think you can wax that. I mean, no. the amount of hair that's no. not getting waxed. That would hurt. I'm not sure any girl would want to touch that. Yeah, you girls, run your hands through that and it just gets there's stuck. Girls, there's girls stuck. that dig that. Stuck. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably braid it. All right, and we do have an all in here, by the way. And it is Neil Farrell with an ace six uh, against a king nine of hearts uh, for Sanborn. Ten seven deuce. Another deuce. And Neil may double up here. And he does hit the ace, so. And actually, he had Sanborn covered. So Sanborn is out. And Neil Farrell has just got himself back into contention to win this tournament. Got to be patient, chip in a chair. Yep. Tristan on the mic. There you go. So John Sanborn has finished fourth, so we finally cracked that four barrier. Uh, he's going to walk out of here tonight with 19840 bucks. Yep, so that'll pay a lot of traffic tickets. Yeah, that would. Man, <laughs> I should uh, go hustle over there. There you go. Play a little Rochambeau. Oh, that'd be perfect. I do pretty well at that game. Oh, really? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. What do you do, on three or go? I go one, two, three, shoot. Okay. All right. One, two, three, shoot. Oh, always, Jesus. Always go rock. You got to do best of three. Okay, I'll do best of three. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. Boom. Um, all right, all right, we're tied. All right. One, two, three, shoot. Yes. Damn it. Should've yes. Thrown, should've thrown paper. I knew you'd throw rock first. <sighs> gotta go rock. Go, gotta go Always go rock. rock. I know. <laughs> People always go rock. Always go rock. <laughs> Ryan uh, had a nice little fall at Banff National Park. Yeah, I, I heard he almost fell in the lake. So it's pretty almost good because now himself. he's like trying to be all careful when he's walking up and down these stairs tonight. He's getting <laughs> old, you know? He's getting old. This is the biggest workout I think he's had all year. Uh, oh, actually, no. No, I've seen him work out of the bar at the at Seminole Hard Rock this year. He hiked Kilimanjaro, too, so I guess I all can't right. give him too much oh, crap. Oh, that's, that's not bad. Yeah, not too bad. He's a lightweight, though. <laughs> Understatement. I've come back a few times, and Ryan's passed out at my door because he can't remember where his room is at oh, that's, events. That's not good. Because we, we were in Montreal one time. And we pre-game before we went to a concert. And somehow, on the way home, Ryan just decided to start sprinting home. But he couldn't remember where his room was at the hotel. <laughs> so Jesus. I get back, and he just passed out in front of my room. I'm like, uh, Ryan? Uh, 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 uh. I was like, yeah, your room's right there. Like, right there. Like, just over on the <laughs> hall. Over yonder. Yeah, this, oh. is, this is great because I'm getting all the, all the dish on everybody up here. Oh, yeah. This is fun. Oh, yeah. There's a lot. You look stunning today, by the way. I just wanted to throw that out to you. Oh, you thank great. you. This is what happens. I think Ryan and I have known each other since like 2000. I don't know. Since I turned 21. So the first World Series, 2006 for me. So we've known each other a long time. Wow. Always get some good stories. Good I, times. I bet you. Yeah, you know he's married to his high school sweetheart? I did not know that. Yep. She's pretty badass, too. Thank, thank God I didn't marry my high school sweetheart. Jesus. <laughs> oh. Well, I didn't really have a high school sweetheart. Thank God. Really? I kind of did, but not really. Yeah, same here. But He wasn't I, in high school, so I don't know if it counts. Oh, you went for the older guy. Huh? He was like a year older. That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Nothing Come on, guys that. the same age as girls, it's like four four year gap in uh, mental mindset. So they say. Or the, yeah. Mental. On the average. I should say not mental mindset. Mental stability. Now that's a mindset. possibility. That's yeah. a possibility. Oh, yeah. Wow. Three-handed. <laughs> Matt Savage has just turned the mic over to Tristan. What is going on here? Yeah. Oh, Savage is working, though. I don't know what he's working on. <laughs> Yep, we oh, oh, not working. He's just tweeting. Okay. That's lies. Like. I thought he was on the computer. He's just on his phone. Yeah. I'm surprised that his neck is not permanently stuck like this. I know. He literally <laughs> never looks up. We couldn't even get a good photo or video of him. We had to tell him, hey, buddy, 
keep that chin up. I'm trying to get some good shots of you. Nice. And all we see is this. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Hey, I got to pause uh, everything up for just a second here because we have to running out of recording space, so I got to start the new recording up. Oh, man. So we'll continue part two if you want to hang around and, uh, you know. I can hang if, for if a few. If not, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. I mean, it's, it's either pleasure. hanging out watching three-handed action when I can't even see their whole cards or hanging out talking to you. It's not so bad. Wow. I feel very, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, that, that got me over. Let's see. Uh, watching paint dry, watching three-handed poker, Mark. Okay, I'll take it. I mean, there's not many options, 